The OTT. Game seven in Houston, halfway home. And the Rockets with a 54 to 43 lead over the Golden State Warriors. The winner moves on to the NBA Finals. Houston playing without Chris Paul and playing well. Welcome, everybody. American Express halftime report. Ernie Johnson, Shaquille O'Neal, Kenny the Jet Smith, and Charles Barkley. Uh, all you really needed to hear about Golden State's performance early came from Steve Kerr and his between quarters interview with David Aldridge. It was short. Steve, what did you see from your team in the first quarter? I saw one of the worst quarters of basketball we've ever played, and we're down five points. So if we can get our act together, we'll be fine. Thing is, Charles, they haven't gotten their act together. Well, you got to get the Rockets credit. They're playing with great energy, great emotion. The crowd is giving them a great lift. That was a fantastic half of basketball. But then you said to yourself, oh, that kind of looked like the last game. The third quarter is going to decide this game, man. Uh, it's going to be interesting. I mean, because they got that thing in the back of their mind, what happened. But they played a perfect first half tonight. They were up 17 in game six, led by 10 at the half. They were up 15 in the first half tonight, lead by 11 at the break. American Express teammates for you. Clint Capella, P.J. Tucker combining for 21. James Harden had 16 to lead him, but look at Capella, 7 for 8. And uh, the job they're doing on the boards, a 26 to 17 advantage for the Rockets and 11 to 5 in offensive rebounds. Nine to nothing in second chance points. Kenny, what you make of it? Yeah, and before I go in there, happy birthday to Jerry West, 80 yes. years old today. Yeah. Yeah. Gotta give him the logo. Man, gotta give him a shout out. But Great man. I, I think overall, the one thing that I, I, I did in the, in the pregame is how do you beat Golden State? It's just being early in the shot clock, and they, and they haven't really used Clint Cabela much in this series. But here's James Harden. Here he is, 20 seconds in. Now he's making his move. So now, with 16 seconds, all of a sudden, Capella gets the law. Early enough so it, it doesn't exert the energy that James Harden has done throughout this uh, series, and he will be up more sustainable. But Clint Capella has a clear advantage on the offensive rebound. And he could get on the glass, and he can offensive rebound for sure and get put back. But again, freeze it again. Here we are, 21 seconds over. Capella usually, and this is what, what I diagram early in the game. He's going to go to the block, but he's going to say, no, I'm coming back for James. And when he comes back for James, even though he goes the other way, it frees him up for a dunk pass and an easy dunk. To me, being early in the shot clock, one, that's sustainable offense. Two, James Harden won't be tired down the stretch. And three, when he does ISO down the stretch, he'll have energy to make the plays happen. Well, we've been saying that since game one. When James Harden goes early in the shot clock, it makes the game easier, number one, for himself, and make it easier for everybody else. Uh, so, he's, he can't, he can't, it's gonna come down to the wire. And he gonna have to make the plays since Chris Paul's not here. You no, know, he's playing a fabulous game, but I thought when they went up by 15, I thought they did themselves a disservice by keep shooting threes. When you got the champs down by 15, I thought you should have, you know, just take it to the hole, punish and punish and punish. We all know 11-point lead is not enough. Champs can get hot at any time. Well, one good advantage, Steve, Steve Kerr made a, just a bad decision with Clay Thompson. He's their best defender on, on James Harden. And it's going to come down to wire. He let him get three fouls the first quarter. He had two fouls within the first minute. But they have three fouls at the end of the first quarter. He's not going to be able to play aggressively when they need him. But they've been trying to hide him on P.J. Tucker and been getting away with it. But when the game's on the line, he's their best defender. And that James going to have a huge advantage. He won't be able to play defense like he normally does. And I think also, you know, they're missing the rim to check that. And sometimes I still look at it if you're Steve, JaVale McGee. You know, the guy finishes around the rim. He blocks shots. He's a little bit more active, even though he hasn't played much in this series. He may be a key down the street. Oh, Ernie, I got to give my man Mike D'Antoni some credit, too. He hasn't played a couple extra guys. Oh, my God. I saw Joe got well, in the game. And Brian Anderson and Joe Johnson yes, got in yes. there in the first half. And really just, it's, it's like 
uh, buying time lineup there hey. because he gives James Harden a yes. chance to rest. Listen to this. This is how important it was. I got a text from Michael Jordan said, I saw Joe is in the game. So he also thought. So that's when it gets the, the real go to the game. Where to drop that line? Oh, you know. Now no, we play. Yeah, there you drop her. Yeah, you know. <laughs> My bad. My bad. 54 to 43 is the count. We talked earlier tonight about the turnover situation and whoever wins that battle wins the game in all six games the warriors have turned it over I, 10 times for nine points houston six turnovers i told you 12 ernie Ladies and gentlemen, if they have nine points i said if they have less than 12 turnovers they're going to win this game but this quarter coming up is very important oh, for yeah. the rockets the crowd very is going to be huge for the for the rockets it's an 11 point game at the break game seven western finals Welcome to the American Express Happy